be a football manager, you've got to be egotistical, you've got to be crazy. Uh, you're dealing in a world which is, in many respects, totally different to many others. We're vulnerable because of re results, we're vulnerable because of insecurity, we're vulnerable because we allow ourselves to be manipulated by certain sections of the media. And in some cases, we enjoy it. Howard Wilkinson is held in high regard in footballing circles. He's reached the heights in management. Deep thinking and determined. Track suited with an excellent track record at each of his clubs. A son of Sheffield, he trained with United, appeared briefly for Wednesday. But it was at Brighton where he played the majority of his league football and where he caught the coaching bug. His skills on the sidelines soon attracted the Football Association. He's held a variety of FA posts, for a time taking charge of England's under-21s. In club football, he coached Notts County into the first division in 1981 and later managed at Meadow Lane. Further success came at Sheffield Wednesday, five years of happy times at Hillsborough. At Leeds, he started as a saviour when they looked set for Division 3. After that, he was the inspiration for two championships in three seasons the second division in 1990, then the league title itself. In delight or in defeat, he's always had a clear view about the demands of management and its place in his life. This job is an 18-hour-a-day job, mostly seven days a week for most of the year. But at the end of the day, we are talking about a job. We are talking about a sport. We are not talking about people's lives. So yeah, it is very serious. And, you know, life or death are more serious than that. We all know the old Shankly says. But at the end of the day, we know they're not true. We know they're not true. Howard Wilkinson, the manager of Leeds United, the boss. Howard, in particular, the last two years of your managerial career have produced the great high of, of winning the championship. and. One or two lows since when you've had to deal with the aftermath of that, but throughout you've seemed very controlled and very philosophical about things. Is that the way you just want us to see you, or is that the way you really are? No, I think it's the way I perceive the job. Um, I know myself. Um, at, at best, I'm uh, uh, reasonably shy. At worst, I'm very shy. Um, so dealing with people who I don't know is difficult for me and that's something I've had to struggle with all my life. It's a bit of an illness, I suppose. Uh, and aligning that to the job, um, I think that it's my job as manager uh, to give players as few problems as possible. And when we won the championship, um, I felt uh, in that period between Christmas and the end of the season I did reasonably well in keeping the pressure off them. Um, I felt that last season when things weren't going so well I did reasonably well at keeping the pressure off them. Um, I feel that I should be the focus of pressures which won't do them any good. Um, so you've got to work hard at, at remaining or seeming to remain philosophical and under control when uh, deep down you might be seething um, you might be very very frustrated you might be very very angry um, because it, it, at the end of the day I'm not in the job as it were to satisfy how I feel and satisfy what I want to do at the time. I'm in the job to do the best job for the club and to get results for the club. In fact, to get as good a result as is possible for the club in a game, over a season, over the years. Um, so, so that means really, I think, if you're going to do the best job, you can't always be yourself. You've got to be the person that fits the situation at the time. So it's a bit of an act, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, isn't life? Don't we all act? When you won the championship, you didn't have to act because you were 
within the bosom of your family at home when Manchester United finally failed at Liverpool. You found it very hard to put your feelings into words then. In fact, I think you said you were speechless. Can you now, having sat in the, well, the warmth it, of it all, it, it, tell us what it meant to you? Well, it meant uh, half of everything, I suppose, in a sense, because from my very earliest days as a player, I suppose about 22, 23, um, I decided or thought that I'd be a better manager than a player. Now, that went a difficult decision, if you'd have seen me play. Uh, and once I started going down that road, I knew I wanted to win the uh, first division title, as it was then. And I knew I wanted to win the European Cup. Now, as it is now, I've got to win the first division title again to win the European Cup. So you're talking about uh, about 27 years of ambition. So uh, I don't know how you how you put it into words. For me, uh, the satisfaction was 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 overwhelming it was it was all consuming but the thing with satisfaction is it's it's not spontaneous it, it's satisfaction builds up over a period of time um, as the season goes along it, the satisfaction is building up so by the time that that Liverpool Manchester United result had come through um, you know uh, uh, it, it, it's it, I, I suppose you, you sat there like a cat purring. I, I, I never have felt the... I remember when we won at Bournemouth and got promotion into the uh, first division. You know, I went away and stayed with a friend of mine, a very dear friend, in the uh, uh, New Forest. Uh, and uh, I got uh, um, a lot of uh, enjoyment and satisfaction that weekend. but. I didn't need to be with a lot of people for that to happen. I suppose that comes back to the shy bit, the, the business of, you know, uh, when we're enjoying ourselves, we, we'll, we like to be doing the things and being in the places where we feel most uh, uh, at ease. And in my case, that's with people I know. Did you never peek at the television that afternoon? Did Ben, your son, bring you all the news? Uh, you never tempted no, to go I, home? No, I never, never. The guests got up for the table when it, when it went to 2-0, but no, I didn't, no. I said I, I wasn't going to, and, uh, and I didn't. I read in your book that you were listening to another of the Manchester United games, travelling back from a scouting expedition of your own. You heard the score, I think, maybe when they were losing at West Ham, and you switched it off again straight away, didn't listen to it through. That's right, yeah. is, is that part of your character that you just... It's easier to, to well, pretend it's not happening until you have to deal with it. Um, when I joined Nuts County and, and joined Jimmy, Jimmy Cyril, um, one of the first things I learned from Jimmy was that, you know, management's a very, very difficult job, full of twists and turns and complications and uh, surprises. Um, and that you shouldn't get bogged down in things that you couldn't deal with, over things that you had no influence, you know. Um, and he used to say to me sometimes, where, where are you going tonight? And I'd say, well, I'm going down to uh, Leicester. Why? Are we playing them? Or is there something happening there? Is there a player? And if I'd say no, he'd say, well, why are you going? I'd say, well, you know, it's a football match. and. Uh, He'd say, uh, you know, you'd be better off at home. Think about tomorrow. Think about the players here. Think about next Saturday's game. Uh, don't make a mistake I've made, you know. Deal with what you can deal with. And if there's nothing down at Leicester that, that you can deal with, then, then you're better off investing your time in, in things that you can. Well, since the championship, of course, it's hardly been sweetness and light, really. Amazing that you haven't won an away game since the day the title was won back in April 1992. Do you think that's just an adverse reaction to success? We surprised a lot of people in winning it. I'm not so sure we didn't surprise one or two of ourselves. Uh, I'm not so sure now, looking back, that maybe some of my lot thought us win a championship, not probable us win a championship, core we've done it, 
and then us win a championship again. You know, that would be a dream. I think that came into it. And I think we had injuries. I think the European thing took on too big a, too big a phenomenon in people's minds. All sorts of reasons. We didn't play well. We made mistakes. There was a change in the bike pass rule. I think that affected us. I think people were less consistent the season afterwards. Uh, so there's a whole range of factors. We had a lot more injuries, um, which meant we weren't going to be as good as we were the season before. Perhaps not least of which were, would be the fact that maybe we couldn't have been as good as we were the year before because maybe the year before we got just about as much out as every, everybody as it was possible to get. Uh, and sometimes that's the problem with uh, with achievement. If you you know, if you overachieve, the only thing after that is disappointment. Howard's circumstances have decreed that our uh, talk today should take place at the Belfry, where the Ryder Cup will be staged uh, later this month. Do you look at other sports, for example, in management, as well as looking at other football managers? I think it's just a natural extension of your job. Um, the best performers in all other areas are of interest to you, but in particular the best performers in sport. And in that there are certain aspects of, uh, of, of the golf game and certain aspects of the good golfers, which uh, you know, you'd be a fool to ignore if you were aware of them. Did you use, I believe, a golfing analogy as part of your pep talks as the championship came looming uh, into sight? Yeah, well, as you know, it's, uh, it's recently become an obsession of mine in <laughs> the last 18 months. Um, I just uh, tried to make them uh, less pressured in the situation. I tried to get them to go out and to perform uh, to their maximum, and I used the analogy of... Uh, you know, uh, Open Championship, you've done all the hard work, it's the last round. You are three strokes ahead or you are tying for the lead, whatever the situation, because it changed during those last few weeks. Trust your swing, trust your swing, don't go uh, doing things different, trying to do things better. Uh, go out and play the normal golf round that you play. If you shoot 67 and win, that's terrific. If you shoot 68 and don't win, that's not a disaster. Probably just means that you got unlucky. The clubs that you've been involved with as coach and manager have played a variety of styles, but what's your basic belief about the way the game should be played? I could indulge myself easily, and I could get the team to play in the way that I liked it to play and play in a way which I like to coach. But that team might not get the results that it either wanted, deserved or needed. Now my responsibility, whether I'm coach or manager, which, I mean, whichever way you want to do it, my responsibility is, is, if, is to get that team to get the results it can get. And I've got to take a lot of things into account if I indulge myself, if I indulge my whim and finish up fourth, not promoted, that's all right if the directors have said that's what they want, and that's all right if the fans are prepared to put up with that. And we can finish fourth the next year, until such times as I can get some players who can play that way better. But if, you know, there are some pragmatists around who say, look, we can get what you want a lot quicker. If you get us into a higher flight where we'll have more money and so on and so forth, then I've got a, I've got a responsibility to the football club, first and foremost. Apart from your current responsibilities at Leeds United, you're also chairman of the recently formed League Managers Association. Tell us about that. We've got a lot to offer, but in the past we've destroyed ourselves, or we've destroyed what we've got to offer through destroying ourselves arguing amongst each other and so on and so forth because really we've never sorted out what the important issues were and dealt with them. I think now 
what we've got now is we've got people involved who recognise what the issues are and are prepared to make sacrifices from their own point of view. Uh, I think the, the powers that be recognise that we're not raving lunatics who yeah. dash from here to there on a whim. They recognise we do have a cohesive, rational point of view. We recognise we do love football. It's our passionate hobby. That's why we're in it, mostly. Um, you know, and that, that passion and that love of it added to our experience uh, means, I think, that a lot of the times we have a very, very significant contribution to make to the decision-making process in terms of the game in general. Unfortunately, up until fairly recently, um, we've not shown ourselves to, to be that way. Uh, it, that, that, that point of view, I think, is changing. I think the game can only ben benefit from it. Turning to England now, the national team are just about to take on Poland in the crucial World Cup qualifier. You have been very critical of the system under which Graham Taylor has to operate. Oh, the, the England in, manager's job in this country is an impossible job. It's absolutely impossible. He's, he's, he's got to fight the system. It seems he's got to fight the press, or, or, or a lot of the press from day one. We seem to have a totally, a totally unrealistic perception of, of what we are supposed to achieve. I mean, I, I remember when uh, Bob was in Italy, and I, 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 I used to, I, I worked with Bob, I worked with Ron, and I saw the pressure that they came under. I worked with, I, I was with them at times during World Cups and European Championships. I remember once uh, in Italy, I think after we played Ireland, I think, I think it was the sun ran a headline, disgrace, bring them home or something. And ten days or two and a half weeks later when we were in the semi-final and had gallantly lost to, you know, it was bring them home, knight them all, make them freedom, give them the freedom of Great Britain. You know, um, and, and let's face it, these people do influence public opinion. But when you go into management, that is surely the job at the top of the tree. Yeah, when you go into politics, the Prime Minister's the job at the top of the tree, isn't it? But there aren't too many people in the Labour government at the moment think they've got a chance of getting it. Do you think you've got a chance of getting it if it becomes available? Oh, I, 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 I've only just started to uh, develop and understand uh, my directors at Leeds, and I'm glad I have, because uh, they're a great set of blokes. Uh, as to understanding uh, uh, the minds of those who... who, who operate inside Lancaster Gate, you know. All I'd be doing would be guessing. But if you were asked? If I were asked, I'd have to consider it and I'd hope that my sensible self would say no. Because I've got enough problems at the moment. <laughs> you know, if I, if I could, I'd like to help Graham, but I can't. On a personal note, you're enjoying your second family now. Do you feel, as you've grown older, that your priorities have become clearer? I have done a lot. I have been non-league. I have worked for the FA. I've worked in the league. I've worked in the Premier League. I've been a bricklayer's labourer, a plasterer's labourer. I've worked on the bread vans. I've painted. I've driven taxis. I've done a lot. And uh, certainly, uh, it's only comparatively recently that, that my football life, as it were, has become uh, uh, perhaps more comfortable. In the early days, without a question of a doubt, it was at the expense of my family. It was the expense of uh, my two oldest kids, Anna and Damien. Uh, they suffered. And in them suffering, I didn't get to enjoy the sort of relationship a parent should have with his children and kids. Um, that, that and, and, and other factors, you know, I was determined that this time that wouldn't happen. Uh, nobody's given more to football than I have. But at times I've given it at the expense of others. And that's not right. That's not right. And sometimes the price I've paid has been too great even for me, although it's my choice. And that's not right. So... I try, and it's not, it's not possible, you, you do it with great difficulty, I try now to make sure that uh, at least it, the proportion uh, uh, in terms of importance uh, 
I, I, I certainly now I'm very, very clear as to where my priorities lie. Does that mean the family takes greater priority in terms of importance, if not in time, to football? Yeah, in, in term, obviously in terms of time, that's absolutely. You've got no chance. This job is an 18-hour-a-day job, mostly seven days a week for most of the year, without a quick shadow of doubt. Um, but at the end of the day, we are talking about a job. We are talking about a sport. We are not talking about people's lives. So, yeah, it is very serious. and uh, Life or death and more serious than that. We all know the old Shankly cliches. But at the end of the day, we know they're not true. We know they're not true. Uh, other people's well-being in the long term is much more important at the end of the day than, uh, than anything you can give that might just make that little bit extra in the job. Although they still have to make sacrifices, but if you're doing well, the rewards are great. And it is, it is the best way of earning a living. The second best way, the first way is to be, the first best is playing. Whatever it is, is playing. The second best is managing, without a shadow of a doubt. So every day that that's happening, you've got to be well pleased. That's not a bad start. If you wake up and then you know you're going into a job like that, that's not a bad start. Howard, finally, you are a member of an elite group of present-day managers, just five, who have won the league championship. You'll be 50 in a couple of months' time, although I must say you look very well on it. But are you reaching a point now where you address the future and um, have plans now that you well, want to share with us for, for the, the rest of your working life? The future is, 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 uh, the future is staying in work. And to stay in work, you've got to be successful. Uh, I keep telling my wife that I'm going to retire at 55. She doesn't believe me. I've got books and videos and, and things I want to do, you know, that would keep me occupied for the next 30 years. Uh, she maintains that after a fortnight, I'd be bored out of my head. Who knows? I think one thing I've learned is that, you know, going back to Jimmy, you, you can only deal with what you can deal with. And mostly in football, that's the next game and the next week. Uh, and I've come a long way since Boston United, when, it, it, when, as a matter of interest, Kettering weren't the best team in the country in non-league because they won the Southern League Premier, we won the Northern Premier League, and when we had the playoff for the champion of champions, we beat them home and away, and we beat them in the FA Cup the week after. You're so putting you mentioned that to Ron, <laughs> never did have a good memory for defeats. <laughs> Howard, thanks for your time today. Thank you very much. Thank you.